right. Hi, everybody. It's Lorena and Kim, and we're doing, we are doing a, I think, it, well, we're doing a session that might, some of this might be live as far as like a collective reading for, for humanity in general. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also we're going to, it's a global update type of thing. Kim has been doing some, some meditation around this and getting information. I've been having dreams. So we're going to give that information today. So who wants to go first? Or do you want to say anything about what getting this information and what we're doing? Oh, maybe I'll just say this first just to get it out of the way because everybody yeah. loves memes. But this morning, I mean, it was big as, I mean, in my third eye about, I saw a troll. I heard troll and I saw the face of a troll. And I'm like, why am I seeing a troll? And then like, I took my dog for a walk and then I was like, oh, maybe... For those of you that love troll, it might run soon. So that might have been a little shout out for everybody <laughs> yeah. in the crypto community because we do a yeah. little bit of, we do spirit chats and then we do, we do that. So guys, at the time this video posted, troll has already run 32%. I time stamped it on my personal Twitter page. So you can go over to Homesick Clairvoyant. I realize when I get intuitive hits like that, that it's just easier for me to put it on the visionary messages, Twitter, or my homesick clairvoyant page on Twitter too. So sorry about that. We've already missed the troll run, but I was on point and it went up 32% today. And by the time I posted this video, it's too late. So I'm sorry. My apologies. I think it's going to be, I was telling Lorena, I've been studying a lot of memes because everybody that watches our visionary messages channel Loves memes. I don't think it's going to run like three, four thousand percent, but I mean, hey, 40, 50 percent, let's take it. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Right. But the derivative of yeah. Wojak. So I think that is Wojak Finance for everybody who follows that. That's yeah. what Lorena, that's what Lorena got for you and take it however you want. Entertainment only, right? Yeah. Yes. Not financial advisor. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's up to you what you do with it. We're just, we're giving what we get. That's it. Yeah that clear all right so did you want to start because you've been doing some meditation and you got some things i think even this morning that you wanted to share around what's happening in the collective yeah i got some i wrote it down because a lot of times it's just coming in through trance and i don't remember 75 percent of what comes through i it's funny when i opened up there's twice this has come through about on the east coast in the direction of the east and i know coast because i was on a beach and mm -hmm. what i saw was a storm coming in and i thought oh it's a storm but when i tapped into that dark cloud it was burning oil mm -hmm. and i can say i understand what exactly that smells like and feels because my dad worked in an oil refinery my whole mm -hmm. childhood i grew up in a town where there was an oil refinery i'm familiar with its vibration the way it, I mean, it was coming on my dad's clothes. So I know it smelled and it was just so pungent. I was like, why is there burning oil? And that came in twice with my meditation is this gas. I kept feeling oil being spilled, oil burning, gas burning, East Coast. I couldn't get more details on that. Did that, and bringing in one of my dreams, did that feel like New York City to you? It did because also it came through was, Tiffany's jewelry store being ransacked. So I was like, wow. this clearly is New York. Yeah, that's my cat behind me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, wow. You're familiar. <laughs> he, he, say it. He, he usually doesn't do that. Okay. I, I did have a dream, and this was just recent, I think two nights ago, where I was in New York City, and this was at nighttime, and I was hanging out with my my best friend, John Law, who's on the other side now, he passed many years ago. My best friend, Melanie, who's still here, but she doesn't live in New York anymore. We, yeah, she, she did live in New York and that's where I met her. But this dream, I was in New York City and I was very excited to be there. I was, yay, we're going to be here. We're, how long are we going to be here hanging out? And all of a sudden I see this, it was like people are all trying to get out of New York City. And they're all turning to the right, which is, I'm not sure what that right meant, but they, there were all these cars that were trying to get out. And, and I almost, and I was in a car, which I've never had a car in New York City, but almost got sideswiped by some of these cars. And I got 
somehow I got missed. But these cars were all trying to get off. Now, does that mean that vehicles can mean bodies? So mm -hmm. is that people who are trying, who are going to leave their body? Or is that trying to get out of Manhattan or because something is occurring? We were talking about that a little bit, what that can mean as far as to symbolically or literally. What did, do you have? And you had that, that you saw that. So what do you feel that means? Or do you have any insight into that? Well, cars, I mean, yeah, I agree with you. Sometimes a car can mean your body. And it's always, is it literal? Is it metaphorical? It made me think too, like, gas, yeah, oil, like mm -hmm. cars. But when you were telling me that dream, it felt, I was like, is there going to be a like, terrorist act? Sometimes that's hard to actually see because it's scary. Yeah. So, are, and it looked like a lot of people were trying to get off the island. I can tell you that. I mean, in a panic. So something could be coming. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. And it did feel like New York City to me while I was there. It was New York City. Yeah. Yeah. But you lived um, in New York for a while. I lived in New York for 20 years. And I've had dreams where I see flooding events in New York City, too. I mean, that's recurred for years. And sometimes it does happen. So where New York is suddenly flooded because it is an island and it's and all chaos breaks loose when it does happen, like the subways fill up and people's basement basements fill up. And but it's yeah. And I had I did have a dream a couple of years ago, now, maybe a year ago, where I did see something happening in New York City. And there was some sort of UFO floating above the sky and it kind of looked like this orange orb. And I saw an ET person who looked very, I think, Andromedan oh. uh, and very sparkly. And I was seeing this from Brooklyn and off the water. And she looked very, she was, it was a female. She was happy. She was laughing. Oh, yeah, stuff's going to happen here. And not in a way that was laughing like, oh, you silly humans <laughs> and your tragedies. It was more like, no, this is supposed to happen. This has changed. And we're all just moving forward. So. Make what you want of that. Yeah, but city looks like a hot spot right now. Interesting. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah. It made me think too as we tied into. Gosh, it's like I I was thinking about we do these collective readings and sometimes we bring in this heavy stuff, but a lot of times we're just reading the volatility, right? <laughs> but yeah. it's like in the markets, we're comparing it to the markets. So we're reading volatility, but yeah. it made me think about the message I got, and I was sharing this with Lorena about. I felt, and I think it was a future thing. I kept hearing the word splitting over and over. And I'm like, what is this splitting thing? Is this an earthquake? But then I saw the Mississippi River, like oh. the, div and it felt like the, div like sides, left and right. Oh. And underneath it was Texas, which is, it was like its own little island. It didn't feel part of this left or right. But specifically with this division, too. I was being drawn to the East Coast in New York. I kept feeling this immigration. Like it was really specific. It was like something transpires, like some kind of announcement or some kind of blanket thing. Let's just give them healthcare, money, blah, blah, blah. But it was almost like some kind of legal thing that was hammered out that the whole left and the right were not happy about. But, uh -huh. and I'm not being political here. I was telling Lorena, we're not talking in the sense of this is right, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. It was more of the sense of then I got worried for the immigrants and their safety. Like, there's almost mm -hmm. like resentment and anger that happens. And, and then this collective get them out of here. And I was like, whoa, this is like really that amount of hatred that was coming out from wow. maybe these freedoms that were being given to them by the lawmakers. So that was, but it made me think about New York and it's a city of immigrants, right? It's like this yeah. whole New York thing. What's the, what does the stat, Statue of Liberty say? Give me your. Oh, poor, you're tired. You're. It was the city of immigrants. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing as far as just the diversity that's there and people from all over the world that live there. Yeah. That's why I loved it there. Because I grew up mm -hmm. where everyone was white and Mormon. So, <laughs> so I loved it there. So, but I can see there's a lot of immigrants there. Could, yeah, be a problem. Yeah, 
Well, that brings into the the solar eclipses that are coming in. Seems like a good time to bring this in. That there are, well, there's four eclipses this year and there's two solar and two lunar eclipses. So there's always a lot of activity that happened around eclipses. But I'm going to just, the two main ones are the two solar eclipses. One is April 8th and the other one is October 17th. Let me see, did I write that down right? Hold okay. yeah. Sorry. April 8th and October 2nd. October 2nd. Well, and the thing is, when those two eclipses come in, the path of the solar eclipse, and I've spoke about this before, is super important. And I think the first one comes in, it comes from uh, like up east around, I mm -hmm. think, New York City could be. And it comes down and it crosses through Texas and then down. And then the other one, the October 2nd one, it comes down from the northwest down and crosses in Texas. So it's really interesting. It's like it X marks the spot. Oh, interesting. Between those two eclipses will be in Texas. And I think it's, I did look at a map and I couldn't remember if it was closer to Dallas or Houston, but they're pretty geologically and they're not that far away from each other. But so that Texas is going to be a hot spot this mm -hmm. year. Interesting. Absolutely. And there's so much immigration that comes up through there. Now, I live in Arizona. Get a lot of immigration coming up through them because it's there are border towns along the state lines here. So definitely it's going to be a hot button issue. It's and I would actually say look for the center of activity to be as far as kind of chaos, chaotic stuff. Yeah, it could be. It could be New York because that's where the first one starts. Inter okay. Yeah. And also, but that doesn't take away, I think it feels like something's going to happen in New York. It doesn't take away from this and the solar eclipse, the lines crossing between those two eclipses in Texas. So just a lot of surprise, surprising, some chaos. Maybe people won't be surprised. I think a lot of people are expecting chaos to come up around the immigration issues. But yeah. Texas is going to be a hot spot for sure. You know, we didn't have this conversation before about the eclipses because every time we were talking about New York too, I kept seeing like a red ball, like a red ball in my mind's eye. And I'm like, is there going to be a meteor? No, that's silly. But maybe I was, that was the eclipse, like oh. the red ball in the sky. And I didn't know that. So I got to do a little Did shout out that? for that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that could be part of the message too, because it deflected that. I'm like, that's just my mind making up stuff yeah. so and i have to say that mississippi line also there is a fault line along the mm -hmm. mississippi river yeah i forgot what it's called i used to go to school in the very southern tip of illinois and there we'd have earthquakes there because of that yeah yeah that is a huge earthquake fault mm -hmm. is along that line anyway i should look these up things up before I say something, but there, there has been, I think one of the biggest earthquakes that's ever happened, it's, it was actually two that were consecutive. I think they lasted, could have been a week or so, because stu I study earthquakes, I'm a geek that way, that I think in the contiguous United States, the biggest earthquake that's ever happened, besides the San Francisco earthquake, is the Mississippi, that Mississippi fault line. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. So it's an interesting place to watch for earthquakes, actually, too. So, and that's close to the X marks the spot. Just don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to talk about, do you have anything else about that? The Oh, no. Just the, the oil thing, the immigration. I feel like there was like some sweeping legislation or attempts for it that really didn't divide, which was surprising because everybody was on the same page. Hey, wait a minute. We don't have health care. We don't have living quarters given to us, like all these things that it's like, it was a like a kind of a kick in the pants to the hardworking American. Yeah. And I'm not taking sides at all. It was just like, what is going on? That was yeah. that bigger picture. Yeah. The other thing that came up too, it's hard to say these things out loud because but there was something about this warning coming through about our pharmaceuticals and the pipeline with how our own pharmaceuticals come into this country. 
Like I really felt, and at first I was like, oh, is that, are they just talking about fentanyl? Fentanyl is coming across the border in, right. in Xanax and in opiates that are on the black market. And it was like, no, like the pipeline of actually ending up in packaged pharmaceuticals, like being tampered with. And so there was just like this, and I was like, how could that even happen? I don't, but I, then I do remember that I was telling Lorena, I do remember that did happen in Mexico where pharmaceuticals are even being sold in a Mexican drugstores being laced with fentanyl. I hope that's not true for people that are doing the proper channels to get their medications to be scared yeah. of that. Oh, and this other big thing kept coming through too. I kept, I it came in three times about somebody, like a political figure, taking a really big fall, like a really oh. big tumble. And I thought I saw the White House, which also it leaves open. There's a few different Obama, Clinton, Biden. It could be Kamala. I don't know. But there was definitely this White House feeling and somebody taking the significant fall, but it being a bigger deal than, oh, I just hit my head or, oh, I just, it's like, oh, you mean I hit my head. Yeah. It's like a literal uh, fall and somebody getting seriously hurt in this fall. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it could be Biden. I don't know. Yeah. But. Well, that's um, really interesting because I've gotten a lot of stuff about his health and not, him not looking well. And but when you were saying fall, I kept thinking political fall, like symbolically. And so and you're just it could be both. <laughs> literally or either. Right. OK. Right. Because that's when you're seeing psychic impressions. Is it literal or is it symbolic? Which one? Yeah. It's, this it one felt literal, though. I mean, uh -huh. Could be just America falling in general. I shouldn't laugh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. It's all we can do at, yeah. at the okay. it's all we can do at the moment, right? Right, right. Yeah, definitely. For those okay. of you for those of you watching us that are not in the States, I've gotta laugh at our humor, poking fun at ourselves for being oh, American. Yeah. <laughs> Country. Oh crazy. And it also felt like there's going to be a lot of more activity, like blatantly visible activity in the sky. Um, oh, like oh, people filming the sky and then going, what is going on? Like lights, mm -hmm. UFOs. I know it is happening, but it felt like it, they're not hiding. Like you're oh. going to see a lot more of that. Cool. That's a lot. You got this was all one 20 minute session this morning. That's great. I'm a Gemini. I get information. <laughs> and then I don't think I get yeah. a lot of information, but I got that information. Huh. Um, wow. I can see that happening. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, let's see. What else? I do have, I did, and this was a while ago. I did have a dream. I mean, I gave this information to Kimmy and she timestamped it on the Visionary Messages Twitter page. I had an earthquake dream and it did seem like it was coming up soon. And it was definitely California. And this was, it felt like Northern California. I was actually saw myself sitting on this piece of land that was a, looked like a peninsula that, and I was looking south and I saw an earthquake happening. And it seemed like a significant earthquake. It felt like Northern California, but it definitely felt like California and it felt like soup. Now, in geological years, what is soon? It's yeah. like an uptick, but usually we're, we have several big, again, eclipses happening. Whenever we're in eclipse season, you can expect earthquakes. This year we have a Uranus, a Jupiter conjunction, along with, with these eclipses. So that means that things are going to be bigger and more exaggerated. So that, and surprising. And very surprising. So you can expect activity, especially earth activity. Mm. And earth is earthquakes. Yeah. Yeah. Like an uptick in earthquakes. So just expect it. And Lorena isn't the only one. I saw a couple of readers on it. Like just showed up in my feed on Instagram. And it's like, mm -hmm. they're like, this one girl is actually saying that she's starting to move her family based on the vision she's getting. Move her family out of California. Like I'm in California right now. I'm a little ah, I'm not near the ocean, but but like yeah, Lorena is not alone in those calls she is making. Yeah. yeah. You should share with everybody why you like earthquakes come to you too. I love the story of your past life thing. Oh I have a past life where I was living in San Francisco, where I was part of that I think it was nineteen oh eight, the big earthquake. 
could have been 1906. Yeah, I, I'm a woman and I'm, I was suddenly, I could see my shoes. <laughs> like first part of the vision, I could see my shoes. And then I could see this, I mean, this shaking, this rocking and rolling, like shaking and I'm running. Like everybody's running to get away from the earthquake. And I was, I lived in that earthquake. I died in that earthquake. So I'm like, I'm an earthquake geek. <laughs> I have been for years. People just know that about me. I'm always watching them. But yeah. And whenever I'm in California, I'm like, oh, no, get me out of here. I don't <laughs> want to be in California. <laughs> just, yeah. It's just funny because I live on the fault. Like right now, like and Andreas, yeah. Like I can drive twenty minutes and go hiking on the fault. Wow! No. Yeah, did you know that? I didn't know it was that close. Wow! Yeah. Right there. What? It's beautiful because where the crack is, water uh -huh. comes up. So you got the middle. You got these oases in the uh -huh. desert, where this water comes up from the ground, and there's wow. a lush palm trees. Wow, you know. that's amazing. The desert oasis. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Enjoy it while you're there. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll ask me after the earthquake, after an yeah. earthquake, a bigger one. Yeah. We felt a few here. That's normal. I have to question this. Yeah. Well, so, not the earthquake situation, but like people leaving California. But here in Palm Springs, kind of where I'm at right now, temporarily. And did you know how much building? So I got this vision of Palm Springs being like one of those 15 minute cities like they're oh. being prepped for that because it's of its size but then our handyman came and told us he just bought a property near the salton sea and we were like what do you mean and he goes yeah didn't you know that they're like all this money is coming into the salton sea and they're building back resorts disney is building a huge resort with like slides and a lazy river and all these oh, things water park. and i so it got me to thinking what is what are they planning for this area, though, it's not matching up with some of the other things that are happening in California. Oh, that's I don't know. really interesting. I would never live there. Yeah. I know. <laughs> not long term. Yeah. Well, first of all, the Salton Sea is it? It's an old, toxic kind of dead sea, and there they're going to remediate it. There are volcanic fields all around there. That is a really bad place to live. That's a, hey. That's just my opinion. Don't get mad at me if you don't agree. And there is a lot of earthquakes there. I don't know what is going to change that actually makes this place inhabitable. I don't know. I, don't I mean, unless rich people come in with all this science that changes things here and this is a place of, I don't know, or technology. I shouldn't say science, it's technology. Yeah. But Yeah, science and technology. And also, so, I had another, I had a weird dream. And this was just last night about L.A. And this was L.A., Hollywood, Beverly Hills, that whole area, not just one specific place where I was watching people. It was like, like I was above them and I was watching all of these characters. And most of these characters are people who are really wealthy. I mean, like mm -hmm. really wealthy and have a lot of influence. And it, I was watching them and at some point everyone looked really ugly and i mean in a sense where i could see it's almost like they were like this darker energy has or had taken over their actions and what they do and they almost look possessed and i'm not saying that everyone who lives in hollywood is possessed it's not but there's a darker energy that exists there that a lot of people are running on that are they're not connected to their true and authentic self they're they're connected to like the baser desires of humans and they're really it, it's super super strong there and that's what a lot of people are running on this energy and it's driving their actions and behaviors that was really dark i mean it's, have you ever seen that movie they see oh have you heard i can't remember i think it's from the 70s where these guys this guy somehow gets these glasses there they look like ray-ban sunglasses he puts them on and then he sees what's really going on instead of what's being projected and anyway it looks like that that everybody who caught was caught in this projection of reality that actually is not the truth or does it is that doesn't have real value real genuine value and everything's running on this programming 
darker mm-hmm. programming. It was really interesting. It's like, oh, what's going on in Hollywood? I don't think it's new, but man, I could see it last night. And I was like, oh, what was that about? Well, yeah. <laughs> probably always, probably always been there. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, I got a real big view of it last night. Very interesting. The math. The masks are falling. Yes, yes, uh, indeed. Yeah. And do you do you want to try and do maybe just a live collective, like tuning in and seeing what's going on in the world? Like just if you feel like doing that right now, because I started sure. doing it. So just take a minute to tune in and see if there's any messages to humanity. See. We'll see if most of my messages came in early. But before we get started, I just wanted to yeah. oh, tell yeah, you guys the yeah. last Bitcoin thing for those of you that are part of the visionary messages. I kept feeling this morning too that I kept seeing Bitcoin hitting 50. And then I heard it's a huge resistance. So there's a huge resistance at 50. So we might see it go up, hit it, come down, hit it. And then I heard 38,000. 38,000 just keeps coming to me about Bitcoin for a while. So I don't know if there's going to be, what do they call it? There's something with the the cycles of the halving event, there's some type of correction. I don't usually get prices. So this is why I'm sharing this. Mm-hmm. At 38,000 being like something, I don't know if it returns to, but it's in relation to all of the events happening around the halving. But I mean, I don't know, I guess in the short, but the good thing is if you're into cryptos, profits will be taken and then pushed to the altcoins. So mm-hmm. when we get that altcoin rally, yay us. So Anyways, just wanted to share that and put that out there before I forget. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's just, uh, we're going to take a second to tune in and just see what comes up. All right. And we haven't tried this before, so oh boy. No. (laughs) All the pressure. (laughs) All the pressure. Okay. Let me see. Maybe I want to write something. All right. Well, I can start talking right now because I feel like I need to talk as it's rolling along. That's okay. Go ahead. And so what I'm getting is, first of all, is I'm seeing this big collective like, oh, man, I want to take a deep breath. Can I just take a moment to breathe here? And people having a hard time breathing. Now, I think that, yeah, there are a lot of lung issues going on right now. A lot. People have colds, flus, COVID again. But people yeah. are waiting to, oh, can I, I just want to take a big collective sigh of relief. When is that going to happen? And what I felt was like, as I was going down into the energy, it moved down. And it's, yes, things are going to shift. Things are going to change. And I felt this energy going sideways. So things might not roll along as expected. Something is going to go sideways. And what does that mean, sideways? There's something unexpected that things are going to go sideways. Like, definitely some unexpected things occurring. And I feel like this could be as late as May and even April. But what I'm getting is that, and then I saw green and I heard green. So things are going to get better and really start turning around and becoming more positive in the month of, I think after eclipse season, (laughs) after April, not the full month of April, like beginning in April, things are going to get better. I feel like people are going to be able to breathe again, but it is a really good time to just connect into your power. There are some, even as crazy, and this year is going to be crazy, as crazy as this Mm -hmm. year is going to be, and it is, expect the unexpected, wackadoodle stuff happening. I know that's very vague, but what I'm getting to (laughs) is, but my point really about that is that things, it's a really good time to focus in on what you want to create because there is an impetus and an energy that is more individual to to go for it, to really go for what you want and what you want to create and look at that in spite of the craziness. And I feel like there's a collective thing in the voices. People's voices are going to get louder. And that's funny because I feel like my voice is choking up as I say this, like the stuff that's been stuck, the stuff that people haven't been saying, the quieter people are going to start speaking more loudly and say, oh man, no more. No more. This is it. And really speaking up. So because there's always that part of society that makes a lot of noise, very noisy, very vocal. But I'm feeling like there's going to be the people who are quieter are going to start speaking out like more voices are going to be heard about what we want, 
what we truly want and how do we create that. There's going to be a focus around that. And I feel that really strongly. So it's the quiet majority, not just the minority, mm-hmm. who are going to speak out more is what I'm getting. So that is really good. Yeah. It feels like it's coming up really strongly. Oh, that's good. That's really good. You know, what's interesting is when we I was when we were writing and focusing, the images I got actually were very the feeling. When we talk about change and all these things that are happening, we also mm-hmm. forget, like you said, there's an energy there. There's a lot of impetus for change that could happen. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who've been wanting change, movement, so speaking. But the thing that I was seeing was I was seeing people riding bike. Nice. I was like hearing like purses tightening. Like it was this feeling like almost, and I don't want to compare it to the depression, mm-hmm. but I had forgotten when I did a reading a couple of weeks ago, I thought I was seeing the stock market contracting too. And I was like, ooh, I wonder, this is interesting because I think it, I don't really follow the stock market. I, I don't think, I think it's doing really well right now. Mm-hmm. But this feeling was coming of some of the energy that was tied to the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. But then we also forget all the beauty that came out of the Great Depression. And so yeah, the creativity, the resilience, the community, people mm-hmm. starting gardens. So the bike thing, it was like, well, mm-hmm. yes, you're used to a certain things in life, burning oil, gas, and not even to talk about the atrocities that are going in other places where those things, resources come from. But but there was this feeling like, is it bad that we're, if we had less gas or gas was so expensive that we'd have to ride bike mm-hmm. and that we'd have to like be more involved with our community? If our purses gotten tightened, would we just mm-hmm. live more with family and share more? And so there was, it was coming like, hey, this is cool. This is cool. <laughs> what interesting, I went right before you started talking, I got this and I, that makes a lot of sense. What are the good things that come out of this? Yeah. And I think that, yeah, people are becoming more conservative fiscally and tightening their pockets and their pocketbooks. I saw a pickaxe and something around mining. Oh. Yeah. So this could be mining, mining resources, mining resources. Are, is mining, mm. and I literally saw the pickaxe hitting the ground and mining for something. Now, mining could be, is that, does crypto use that as a term? Mining. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you didn't know that? No. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't even know how it all works. But I mean, but yes, they mine. Okay. It's or whole data mining. There's something around yeah. mining. Now, is this like physical resources? That if yeah, oh, that's interesting. Because if it is around physical resources, I'm getting a no. Like people are going to be like no. But what I or it could be like some new pockets of gold that people find. That seems more doable. More that seems more like it that there's more like because mining for resources in a sense like uranium like those i'm getting a big no around that as far as like people fighting that sort of thing but mining for gold or other resources and resources can also mean money so that could be data mining that could be that could also be like crypto mining somehow that there's something around that because that's I've never seen like a pickaxe before in any kind of reading that I've ever done and striking. So there could be just look for things around that. Yeah. Can I yes, give you please. a little bit of I wonder if what you're reading too is and everybody out there that's a total crypto geek and knows all the technical words around this. Mm-hmm. So there's a having event that's coming up in April. And what that means is when that have having come, there is less Bitcoin to mine. Oh, so it so it becomes more valuable. So okay. that's why crypto takes a big upswing during a having event. Okay, and Bitcoin leads the way. So it could be too. This is another facet of maybe what you're reading. You can picking up on different mm-hmm. facets of it, but people might be coming into crypto based on that mm-hmm. alone, and then getting more resources for themselves. And like, I always say the reason we do this, like that portion of what you and I work for, it's not really, oh, I want to be so wealthy and I want to own a Lambo and a mansion. It's we provide this information because of freedom to create community, to have have enough so we can get out of poverty, like all these things. And they're, we get off the hamster wheel and it's just a resource. It's a a mean to an end. Yeah, I understand. So What's interesting is as you're saying that, I'm getting visions of coins dropping. So 
like gold coins dropping. So that could be it, that money coming to people. Yeah, that'd be nice. Cause yeah. There's a lot of good people that can really help change this world that if they come into the money, the people with the right dream. Yeah. And I do, and I am getting it. This is just a last minute thing. And I just got this, that there is going to be some influence, some ET influences coming in. And this is, I love it. There's an ET influence of some technologies that are going to come into our world. Now that is going to be hidden that ETs are giving this, this technology. No, people are, the people are receiving this technology are not going to come out and say, oh, an ET gave this to me. But there's right. going to be some ET influence of some technologies that are going to come out this year. This is going to be this year is what I'm seeing that are going to be like, whoa, that's amazing. So, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, there's going to be something happening this year of new technology that's going to drop. And I'm not talking about the new Apple thing. Now, this is different. That is a little bit, that's going to be some mind blowing stuff coming out that are, I mean, not I mean, really new. Let's just say that really new that it'd be like, wow, okay, this could actually, the trajectory of this could change where we're going in humanity. And we're going to start seeing bits and pieces of that happening this year. The most positive thing I can feel in what you're saying is medically. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's other things. Mm -hmm. But I think we're going to get this, wow, we got this new blah, blah, blah that cures this. Mm -hmm. And it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you getting about that? That could. Like it's a breakthrough. It feels it's interesting. That it feels like it's car like I saw the heart, like more like cardiac issues. Yeah. I feel um, a lot of people going, yeah, this could really help people. Like it does feel heart related, but I'm feeling more emotional. Do you feel like it's something with the medical community? Well, I, this is like one facet, but eventually being able to avoid transplant. Oh, I, I felt like literally like the like mm -hmm. transplants becoming more less and less. Huh, that's interesting. But definitely a possibility. What I'm getting is that there's something that's going to help people actually breathe better. It's like cellular rejuvenation kind. It's related. That's. Huh. Yeah. Like restructuring this at the cell level, which cell level, emotion, the emotional subtle bodies too. Yeah. yeah. This is it. We're at, we're just at the beginning of this. So it's going to be a crazy year, but there's some really good things that are happening too. And to remember that and to not get lost in the craziness and just stay grounded. It's, we're going to get through this. Yeah. This is going to be controversial. We'll see if we leave it in the video, uh -huh. but what is your feeling on who's going to come out the winner? Oh. We know, I mean, we've talked about, there's a lot of people saying who the winner is <laughs> going to be. People that are pretty legit. I don't even want to say really, truly. Because if you want to talk, Trump is so bombastic. and That's a great word for him. Bombastic and, and reactionary. And he's a buffoon in some ways. So most people either love him or hate him. Personally, I don't care. And yeah. that might piss people off that I said that too, that I, but I'm not going to get caught up in it. That's why aren't you taking a side? Yeah. I'm not going to take a side. And I think Biden is so old and I've seen him being like his health degenerating as time goes on. So I don't see physically unless there's someone's just holding him up on with drugs. <laughs> He's a weekend at Bernie's and, and his handlers. I don't see how he can make it through another election yeah. truly so it's really hard to say so who is going to run yeah yeah crazy if you feel like saying who you think you go for it i have not tried to I, that person uh, yeah first of all i should have a disclaimer that lorraine and i are apolitical because to me it's watching a circus mm -hmm. i'm i'm very apolitical and i just say this with the information i got earlier today where i was telling her all of a sudden this information came in that was like He's highly protected. He's highly protected. I'm like, who is highly protected? And then I saw Trump's face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. And then I saw MLK, Kennedy. And then not to compare him to them in any way, but it was like this feeling of there might be some violence that's ordered on him, like an assassination or some type of something. Yeah. But there was this feeling of he's highly protected, like it won't work. And so then it made me laugh. And I'm like, so 
do you want me to share that with people? Because it's very polarizing, mm-hmm. but I do feel that there is a very strong amount of energy around him for a high probability that he is going to come out the winner. There's a lot of people saying that he will. Like, I just think the whole government is whack. But if it should happen, it should be very interesting to be an American. I mean, for everything that's going to transpire. We're speaking about Trump, just in case anyone's wondering. And oh, I, did I not I, come out and say his name? You did. <laughs> okay, sorry. I meant to. I have deliberately tried not to look at that. Yeah. And at some point I will look at it. But, but I think that's really yeah. interesting. I've seen stuff about him before. And this was three, four years ago that is really interesting and important. And that has a similar vein of being protected. But yeah, I am neutral. But that's no haters, please. Yeah. Because I know how people feel about him. Yeah. Well, everybody wants you to pick a side. And I think something is going to change. Like people don't want to hear it. But I think older generations in general, like, I think something in general has to change with government and all of this is leading to that and I know that there's tons of people that have lots of opinions on that and we don't want to get into it we just want to deliver the messages and and share it in a light way (laughs) as best as we can (laughs) so there you go I hope we tiptoed around that well (laughs) yeah yeah okay and we can look at that later look at it more closely and just anticipate yeah 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 Yeah. all right I guess we end on Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But just, and, but to really focus in on the good stuff, focus in on the good stuff. Yeah. Because there's going to be some really good stuff. Stay calm, stay centered. Yeah. There's some really good stuff that's going to happen this year in the chaos. There's some really good stuff. Yeah. Be kind, take care of each other. Yes. Choose things that are healthy and good for you and eat well, relax. <laughs> yeah. Meditate, do yeah. breath work. Breathe. <laughs> breathe. Breathe. Said breathe at the same time. <laughs> yes. That's really good. Yeah. All right. All right. With every we all get to say goodbye, everybody, right. on that note. Yep. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. This was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. Bye. Tell us what you think. Like and subscribe for additional crypto intuitive readings, global predictions, and intuitive development education. If you would like a private reading with Kimmy or Lorena, please find our individual websites listed below. Please remember this information is for entertainment purposes only and should never be considered as professional financial advice.